everybody. It's Nikki with Homeschool Knockouts. Today, I'm going to give you five of my favorite cool book series for boys ages 8 to 12 and for girls too. And for girls too. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the first in the series of book recommendations for our children. So if you're trying to find books for grades 3 through six or ages eight to 12. This is just a loose uh, span. Um, this video is for you. So why am I starting with series? I love series, y'all. When you have a series, it is a built-in no-brainer autopilot. As soon as your child finishes one book, they're on to the next book and on and on and on. So I love that. So let's start with I'll, I'll start with the younger book series. So number one, and this is in no particular order, Geronimo Stilton. Geronimo Stilton, y'all. Oh my goodness. We literally have about 90, almost 100 of these books. I just grabbed a handful just to show you guys. But to this day, now my kids are 17, 15, and 13. My 15 and 13 year old, they still listen to these books on audio. Okay, and let me tell you, let me tell you why this book is a perennial favorite with a lot of kids. Now, for those of you uh, who uh, who have outgrown the chapter books, they they now have, well, they probably had it for a while, graphic novels. So they want to keep the story going. But listen, most of most of the books have corresponding um, CDs. If your child really likes the Geronimo series, I highly recommend you get the CDs. I know CDs are old school, but this is what they had back in the day. And to this day, my kids still put these CDs in their um, their radio. I know it's old school. For those of y'all who don't know what a radio is, they play CDs and tapes. The CDs are well done. They are a joy to listen to as a testament to my kids who still listen to the audio at night. I kid you not. So there are probably about 150 of these books. Am I kidding? There are so many of them. What I like about this series, because I don't have them in any kind of order. All right, I'll just grab one. So what is this book about? So the book is about, well, here are the characters. You have Geronimo here, who is a journalist, a reporter. And then you have a sister, Thea. And then I forget who, I forget who Trap is. And, and Benjamin, but his uncle, Geronimo's uncle, like owns the newspaper, it's called the Rodent Gazette. And then Geronimo goes on adventures trying to get a good story. So they live on Mouse Island and Geronimo goes all around the world trying to get a good story. Now, what I like about this book is that um, there are lots of bolded words and it's so funny. It's so hilarious, but there's something interesting going on on every page. Now, for some people, this might be a little busy, but for a lot of kids, they find it very visually interesting. Or if you are a reluctant reader, these are little crutches that kind of help you keep moving from paragraph to paragraph. So I love these series. I love them. And the fact that there are so many of them means you can keep the ball rolling. All right. So that's Geronimo Stilton. It is action packed. He travels all around the world. He's in Japan with the way of the samurai. Um, I think he's in Alaska here. Where is he at? In the Amazon. I think he's in the Amazon. And by the way, the story takes place in New Mouse City. And that's another thing about the Geronimo books. There are a lot of play on words on our everyday words. So um, it, it adds so much uh, more depth to the to the wordplay in the book. I think it's amazing. He's always on some adventure and he's got his sidekicks with him. But these books are fun. Here's a sneak peek at the graphic novel. I have not seen these. I just know my son was like, mom, can you get this for me? And then it just came in the mail. I never even looked at it. But it's the graphic novel. Now, this is cool. So um, there you go. So Geronimo Stilton, number one. The next book series on the list. Who would win? Oh, baby. Let me tell you how much mileage you can get out of this book series. Oh my goodness. And this is not even all the books. This book is by Jerry Palata, illustrated by Rob Bolster. I love Jerry uh, Palata. He actually um, 
did some math books that are really, really cool and fun. Now, the premise behind the Who Would Win series is that you're pitting two animals or insects, bugs, whatever, against each other. And throughout the book, you're going to get stats, data on, sorry guys, I don't have a green screen. I don't know why it's not show, It's not showing the green here. But, oh, I still have it on green screen. Oh, let me pause it. Sorry, guys. I forgot I still had the green screen checked on my um, laptop. And so you couldn't really see the book. Okay. So, so in that case, let me show you this one again. Because <laughs> I know all the green was making the book disappear. So Geronimo still didn't. Okay. So, who would win? So, the premise behind this is that you take two animals and you give... Uh, facts, data, all kinds of information, charts, illustrations on each animal. This, you talk about book reports you can do. You talk about reading comprehension. You talk about, oh, writing prompts. You can get so much bang um, out of these books. So you'll have all this information on these books on these two animals, okay? And it's so richly illustrated. Look at the, the full bleed on these pages. Look at this, okay? And you're also learning vocabulary. Look at that. Look at that. It's like a biology book. You're learning biology or biology words, like, you know, bo basic vo vocabulary words, right? So chock full of information. And then when you get towards the back toward the end, now you have to make a prediction. And by the way, I have not met a librarian who did not like these books. They love these books and kids are always checking these books out. It's like it gives you information to do a battle. And after you get all this information, in the end, at the back, you have a checklist. This is in every book. And you have to, if you don't remember what was going on, you go back to the, to the, uh, you go back through the book and get your information to find out who won. You have to kind of pay attention while you're reading, but if you're not paying attention or you just get caught up in certain facts versus the other, now you have to go back and search for your information, okay, which is great. It's the beginning stages of research. That's why I love that. See, look at that. And then you get little, little tidbits of information. So I love these. And there are lots of books in the series. Polar Bear, Polar Bear versus Grizzly. Sharks, Hammerhead, Bull Shark. Here's a list of all of them. Well, not all of them because they have much more than this. Get you closer. These are nonfiction books, teachers, librarians, Love these books. I have seen this book or these books in many a child's hand. Many a child's hand. Lobster versus crab. And let's talk about informational reading. So now you're reading to learn. So your child's learning how to read charts, illustrations, graphs. I think they have, I'll give you some more. Look at that. Rattlesnake, sec secretary bird. Kill a whale, great white shark. That was that's a favorite in our house. This one, I'm just gonna go through these really quickly. You get the point. Now, this was a favorite. Whale versus giant squid. This was this book was actually replaced. Oh, that's a copy. Because you know what? You know why why I have copies? Because one kid will lose one or damage one, and then the next kid that comes up is like, wasn't there a book about so and so? And then I have to go order. You see how I have extra copies? Because by then I'm like, okay, let me just buy this kid his own version because they would fight over the book so i would just get extras because it kept them quiet oh hold on so you 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 see all of the different animals and then choose an animal that your child likes this is um it's a number of animals not just two you got four animals the ultimate ocean rumble, okay? You have the ultimate jungle rumble. So now they're taking more than two animals and they're comparing. The ultimate um, the ultimate series has a bracket. So I think that's pretty cool. 16 creatures. So now you're kind of like going to the next level. So now you got to juggle more information. <laughs> Number three on the book list of 
favorite book series for boys ages 8 to 12? Zombie Chasers. Zombie Chasers by John, I don't know how to say his last name, Clofer, Clofer, John, JK. Now, this is an interesting little series. Um, I don't know how many books there are. We have seven of them. Um, it is a middle school book um, because the main character, main characters are in sixth grade and eighth grade. Um, you do have um, some middle school topics like crushes, things like that. So that's just something to keep in mind. But it's a really fun series. It, it's, you know, it's zombies. So it, there's a lot of gore and a lot of, you know, just that kind of genre stuff, you know, all that kind of. But it's so cartoony that it's not anything that would make you like, like scream because you're scared. You're just going to like kind of like laugh at it. So you can see by the pictures. Despite all the gore and mayhem, it's offset by um, all the shenanigans that they get in. And the premise of this is that um, Zach has, um, he and his little ragtag friends, they are zombie chasers. And his sister, um, Zach's sister becomes a zombie. And he, his best friend, Rice, and then his sister's, you know, snooty best friend they join together as a team to fight the zombies and i think the girl's madison and she's like in eighth grade and then zach and his friend are in sixth grade and so their personalities are so different she's like you know beautiful she's a vegan and you know gorgeous and, and like a, a like she'll be a, a future prom queen and then zach you know he's just Zach. he's just a little sixth grader and then his friend you know rice or something some little food name you know so with the three of them and then more kids come on come along into the to the fight as you go through the series but i mean man they're just going it is so funny. I mean, you just see the most absurd things going on in this neighborhood, things happening at stores, the school, the parents, everything. This is a great book for reluctant readers because it's, number one, it's so funny, it's so over the top. You have, you know, all the illustrations. So if you have an older child who is a reluctant reader, this is a great entryway to get them in to um to reading because it's very enjoyable so half the battle especially with boys getting them to read is not putting our ideals on what they should like to read boys a number of boys they like what they like and you'll see when i show you the last two series they like what they like and we might you know feel oh this is discrimination or this is bullying is boys. So if you meet them where they are and you let them like what they like, this is a great book for them to get going with. Okay, so let's move along. Okay, book number four. This this is a really popular series. My kids would read this like in an hour. Dan Gutman's Weird School. Now the Weird School, which is the first series, and then the next series is is the Weirder School, I think. And then after that, it's Weird School Days. I don't know, but he's got a lot of books. There are lots of jokes throughout this book, and like the main characters, they're joking on the cl their classmates, their teachers, all the adults in at the school. This primarily takes place at school. The main character, uh, AJ, um, he has his arch nemesis, who is Andrea, who's like you know, you know, a sycophant and a teacher's pet. And why some people have problems with this book is that. Um, they think that there's a lot of there's a lot of bullying and um, stereotypes, gender stereotypes. Like all the girls are, the girls are all nerdy and they're do-gooders and they like scream after team pop stars. And all the boys are physical and they do competitive sports and they're like, hmm. And you know the other people are like, hmm. And so they're always throwing insults at people, calling them dumb, stupid things like that. So I know some people take issue with that. They think it's like bullying or harassment. Have you listened to some boys' conversations? That is 
time in, in memorial that they, they have done that. That's their way of communicating. And as moms, sometimes we don't always understand that. You know, that's their way of showing love and appreciation and just their way of bonding. It looks different. So this book, I, I mean, there's so much you can unpack with this. There are plot twists, surprises, conspiracy theories. I mean, it's it's something a boy would absolutely love. And then you have all the names that you can call people. So it's fun. It's really fun. It's a fun, quick read. Mrs. Dole is out of control. But I like how they treat the adults. It's still positive. They, uh, Even though they're making fun of the names of the adults, um, the adults are still shown in a positive light. So it's not like they're, you know, ragging on them. Okay. Now you'll notice with the school series, and this is like the second series, um, but all of the books have... They talk about some teacher or school uh, school person, and there's like a character trait about that adult in the school setting, and that trait usually kind of causes chaos, and and then everything everything kind of wraps up toward the end, which I think is hilarious. But the one thing I like about this, so you'll see Mr. Granite is from another planet, so I like the rhyming. Mr. Harrison is embarrassing, so I like how it rhymes. And um, Mrs. Lily is silly. You start, this is great if you're writing, doing creative writing, and you're trying to do character study, you know, building characters. Um, these, uh, the adults, that's, you know, that's a great way to study, you know, how did they get that name? And then you look at, okay, what are these character traits that, you know, align with these names? Dr. Nicholas is ridiculous. So the books are crazy silly, but in the end, AJ always realizes that school is important and and can be fun. So number five in our um, books that are in a series for boys ages eight to 12 and girls is George Brown Class Clown by Nancy Krulik. Now, George, uh, he's a new kid at Sugarman Elementary, and he's like he's like a troublemaker, but he's he's bowing to, to himself. I'm not going to get into trouble. I'm going to be good. He, George reminds me of Jack Tripper from Three's Company, for all my old, my old heads out there. He's trying to be good and everything, but he just somehow gets himself caught up in some kind of drama. So, um, but this is... Um, what the book looks like. You have illustrations. It does bolt some of the um the phrases. I don't know if that has any meaning. I think it's just something just to, you know, kind of like keep your kids' attention. <laughs> also good for reluctant readers because you have lots of illustrations that take up, you know, a big portion of the page. And you have uh, look at that. You see. So it's no stress on your child. It's really funny. You know, George is a trouble magnet. A lot of kids can see themselves in George's shoes. So no matter what, he's he's got, he's trying his best to be good. He's trying his best. And, you know, and boys, and that's why I said said this video was for boys. I mean, boys get this, you know, look the hole and and the hole in the sock, the, you know, the dirty, uh, scraped up knees. You know, that's right up that's right up our boy's alley. You know, so it's a funny book and it's gross. It's gross, y'all. Okay. Titles are funny. Look at the wedgie, at least. <laughs> Thank goodness his underwear is clean. But you know, it doesn't take itself seriously. You see in a lot of the books, he's losing his pants. He's his underwear is showing in so many of these uh, uh, books, okay? But they're really funny, and there are lots of books in these series. I think this might have at least 70 or 80 books in the series. So, look, Trouble Magnet. That, this is exactly what George is. He is the Trouble Magnet. Who stole the toilet? So, of course... These books are for boys and girls, but boys will definitely gravitate toward uh, these. When they see these book covers or read the titles, they will gravitate toward these. And all of these are chapter books with the exception of Who Would Win? It's just, uh, I don't know what, what you would call that. But all the books are chapter books 
fun, lighthearted, and um, I think there are great ways to introduce your child into reading if they're a reluctant reader or if they're just looking for something different to read. And if you find that they like you know, one book in the series, then you know you can keep it going with other books in that series. So that's less you have to worry about keeping your child um, occupied. Just get your babies to read, okay? There you have it. That is my list of five books that are in a series for ages eight to 12. We're about third grade to sixth grade. Your list may look different. I have a lot more in this series because this is going to be a series. This is series number one. I have a lot more. And um, these are kind of like, you know, gross, fart, jokey kind of boy books. I love you guys. Take care. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.